Kirtan or Sankirtan moment, the Brahmanical culture and Kshatriya government will automatically come back and people will be extremely happy. Yes, you told. But chanting Hare Krishna and learning to love God means love is expressed in service and Prabhupada already has a lot of instructions regarding setting up for an ashram. So loving God means also that one must be eager to follow Krishna's order coming via disabling succession. Prabhupada has already ordered us to establish Daivi Varanashram in Iskon, so we must sincerely endeavor to do so. Yes, I understand. That's why Prabhuji, please tell me more about the Varana, the occupational duty in the bodily platform. Uh, because uh, I think Varana is the thing that is to be introduced first and then followed by Ashram. Right. The Varanas are, so to say, classification of different occupation and Ashram Dharma is gradual progress on the path of Self-Realization. Both are interrelated and one is dependent on the other. The main purpose of Ashram Dharma is to wake up knowledge and detachment. The whole system of Ashram Dharma is a means to detachment. The Varanashram Dharma is prescribed for a civilized human being just to train him to successfully terminate human life. Self-realization is distinguished from the life of lower animals engaged in eating, sleeping, fearing and mating. This subject matter is described more elaborately by Bhishma Dev in Shanti Parva of Mahabharat. Bhishma Dev advised for all human beings nine qualifications. Not to become angry, not to lie, to equally distribute wealth, to forgive, to beget children by one's legitimate wife, to be pure in mind and hygienic in body, not to be inimical towards anyone, to be simple and to support servants and subordinates. One cannot be called a civilized person without acquiring the above mentioned preliminary qualities. Besides these, the Brahmins, the intelligent men, the administrative men, the mercantile community and the laborer class must acquire special qualities in terms of occupational duties mentioned in all the Vedic scriptures. The Varanas are so to speak classification of different occupations and Ashram Dharma is gradual progress on the path of self-realization. Both are interrelated and one is dependent on the other. I see. The main purpose of Ashram Dharma is to awaken knowledge and detachment. The whole system of Ashram Dharma is a means to detachment. Prabhuji, if the ultimate aim of Varanashram is spiritual advancement, then why is there need to organize the Varanas? Why not focus only upon Ashramas that is meant for detachment? The ultimate end is indeed spiritual, but if the social order is not organized, then spiritual order is also disorganized. So there must be division of labor and activities. That's why. To keep the society in order, they must be educated according to his capacity and they should be engaged for common benefit that is required. And as I had told you earlier, the common benefit is Satisfying Vishnu. Right, you got it. I'll tell you one of the beauties of Varanashram. What's that? Varanashram is for every kind of people even if he is more inclined to sense gratification and is not so much interested in his liberation. True. Most people are not into liberation as they are into sense gratification. Yes. So, those who are engaged in fruitive activities or prescribed duties according to the four orders of social and spiritual life are not actually pure devotees. But still, because they are offering the result to the Lord, they are accepted as devotees. I see. When one has no such desire but acts spontaneously out of love of God, 
Such a person must be accepted as pure devotee. But in material world, not everybody is ready for pure devotion. The conditioned soul who have come into contact with the material world are all more or less desirous of lording it over material nature. The system of Varanashram and the prescribed duties under this system are so designed that the conditioned soul may enjoy in the material world according to his desires for sense gratification and at the same time gradually become elevated to spiritual understanding. The Vedic process of sense gratification is therefore planned in such a way that one can economically develop and enjoy sense gratification and yet ultimately attain liberation. Uh -huh. Yes. Vedic civilization offers us all knowledge in the Shastras and if we live a regulated life under the direction of Shastra and Guru, all our material desires will be fulfilled and at the same time we will be able to go forward to liberation. Really? Really interesting? Yes, and that is the beauty of Varanashram. Right. Now, Prabhuji, among the Varanas, who should come first, the Brahmanas? Right. Some section of the people, they should be very intellectuals, brain. Just like to maintain this body, we require first of all the brain. If the brain is not order, then other parts, they may be there, but they are also useless. So the first intellectual Brahmins, then Kshatriyas, then Vaishyas, their business is to produce food. And then Ashramas, right? Yes, this is for our living condition. And then human life especially meant for spiritual realization, self-realization. For that purpose, again, another four divisions. Generally, the Brahmachari, student life, Grahastha, married life, Vanaprastha, retired life and Sanyas, renounced life. So at the end of life, one should be renounced from all other responsibilities and completely devote his life for Krishna consciousness or God consciousness. In this way, when a person dies in God Consciousness, his life is perfect. This is Vedic Civilization. So at least those who are intelligent class of men, they should join and study this moment and try to broadcast for the good of the human society. The basic principles Prabhupada has already explained. Right. Prabhuji, can you please tell me the duties of all the members of the Varanas, like the duties of Brahmanas, Kshatriyas, etc. one by one? Yes, but before let me tell you the duties that are common to all members of the society. Okay. Ahimsa satyam asteyam, akama krodha lobata, bhuta priya hiteha cha, dharmoyam sarva varanika, non-violence, truthfulness, honesty, desire for the happiness and welfare of all others and freedom from lust, anger and greed constitute duties for all members of society. I see. Now, the duties of Brahman. These are given in the Bhagavad Gita 18.42. Shamo damas tapo shochyam kshantir arjavam mevacha jnana vidyana astikhyam brahma karma subhavacham Peacefulness, self-control, austerity, purity, tolerance, honesty, knowledge, wisdom and religiousness. These are the natural qualities by which Brahmanas work. Mm -hmm. Can you please elaborate on these qualities? Yes. The qualification of Brahman, Shamo Damastapascha Cham Shanti Rajava Mevacha. We have to judge by the qualities, not by birth. But since India accepted a Brahman by birth without these qualities, India's civilization fell down. We do not recognize Brahman by birth. This is Shastri injunction. That if qualities are found somewhere else, that means who is not born in a Brahman family but he has the qualities of the Brahman, then he should be accepted as a Brahman. That is Shastra conjunction. Yasahi yallakshanam proktam varnavi vyanjakam yad anyatrapi Anyatra means elsewhere. Tatye naiva vinir dishet He should be accepted as such. Similarly, if a man born in Brahman family, but he has the qualities of the Shudras, paricharyatmakam karyam shudra karma sabhavajam Paricharya means service, to accept. So therefore, according to Bhagavad Gita, nobody is Brahman. So first, Shamo. Shamo means controlling the sense, controlling the mind. In every circumstance, mind is steady. That is called Shamo. 
and damo damo means senses controlling the senses my tongue is dried up asking for a cigarette now if i am a brahman then i shall say no you cannot smoke that is damo that is damo a senses may dictate me we are now at the present moment we are all servants of senses i have already explained that our uh, real occupational duty is to become servant so instead of becoming servant of krishna we are now servant of our senses this is our material life so if you instead of becoming servant of senses if you become master of the senses then you are a brahman then you are a brahman therefore krishna says shamo damas tapo this shamo damo how it can be practiced without tapasya it is so easy thing to control your mind and senses but with tapasya you must agree that is life tapo divyam putrayena shuddhet satvam urshabde was advising his sons my dear boys this human form of life is meant for tapasya tapo what for tapasya divyam to realize the supreme deva why it is required tapo divya putra yena shuddhet satvam your existence will be purified if you practice tapasya now what is my existence am i impure yes therefore you are dying otherwise you are eternal nahunyate hanyamane sharire you are eternal but you are dying you are subject to death because your existence is impure therefore tapo divyam putra yena shuddhet yasmad brahma saukhyam anantam if you want really blissful life eternally then you must come to the eternal existential position platform you come to the spiritual platform you come to your original consciousness then your sattva your existence will be purified and you will enjoy enjoyment is your right so therefore this shamo damo can be practiced provided you agree to execute tapasya tapasya therefore in this krishna consciousness movement we are training these boys anyone it doesn't matter what he is no illicit sex no intoxication no meat eating no gambling this is tapasya so shamo damo brahmanical first qualification can be practiced provided you agree to undergo tapasya tapo everything is possible provided you agree tapasya shamo damo tapo then shaucham very clean everyone must take bath thrice daily and wash the clothes this is shaucham external shaucham so they are doing that they are rising early in the morning at half past 3 and taking bath in this country they don't even require hot water in cold water shaucham very clean brahman means shuchi and the others they are called kripana or muchi shuchi means always cleansed internally bahya abhyantara shuchi inside and outside outside by taking bath washing with soap soap or if soda soap is not available with earth or oil that is external cleanliness similarly internal cleanliness one must rise early in the morning evacuate then after taking bath must chant hari krishna mahamantra see the mangalartik in this way one has to purify himself internally and externally and then tidiksha satva shamo damas tidiksha tidiksha one has to learn tidiksha just like in prabhas times the foreigners how much tribulations they have to suffer on account of some temples these foreigners they came here to become devotees and the authorities are prepared to demolish their temple so one has to tolerate what can be done even prahlad maharaj he was the son of hiranyakashipu the relationship was father and son but because the son was a devotee the father was prepared to kill him this is the system all over the world jesus christ because he was preaching krishna consciousness he was crucified although jesus christ preached thou shall not kill unfortunately he was preaching in such a society that he was killed so these things are there always the demons they are always after the devotees how to harass him how to give him trouble therefore one has to learn humility otherwise one cannot make progress in krishna consciousness therefore chaitanya mahaprabhu has advised trunad api sunichana tarorapi sahishana amanina mandrena kirtaniya sadahari 
if you want to make progress in the matter of chanting the holy name of the lord then you have to learn also tolerance so many people will criticize so many people will be prepared to unnecessarily put hindrances in your path so one has to learn if one is serious to make progress in knowledge didiksha means tolerance oh it is very cold no i cannot take bath no you must tolerate you must tolerate didiksha and then arjavam arjavam honesty honesty arjavam means even an enemy inquires from me what is your secret i shall say yes it is i have no secret this is my position this is called arjavam don't keep any secret and then gnanam knowledge what is that knowledge knowledge that i am not this body this is knowledge and if you simply think i am this body you may advance in your so called scientific knowledge you are a fool this is called gnanam vidnyana vidnyana means practical application if one believes god krishna and if he believes that krishna is giving food to everyone even to elephants and the ant then why shall i bother for my food he must give me so krishna is supplying food to everyone eko yo bahunam vidadati kaman that is god so what i have done that he will not give me food and i am engaged my life for his service if i have no such confidence then where is krishna consciousness why shall i flatter others for my food so this is brahmana i must have full confidence in krishna and god is so able so competent that he can feed millions and trillions and unlimited members of living entities and i have dedicated my life for krishna service why i will starve that is the fact that is stated in shrimad bhagavatam kasmat bhajanti kavayo dhana durmadan dhan chirani kim pathina santi shanti bhiksha naivangripah parabrutah saritopya shushyan rutra guha kim jito vati nopasannan kasmat bhajanti kavayo dhana durmadan dhan are there no torn clothes lying on the common road do the trees which exist for maintaining others no longer give alms in charity do the rivers being dried up no longer supply water to the thirsty are the caves of the mountain now closed or above all does the almighty lord not protect the fully surrendered souls why then do the learned sages go to flatter those who are intoxicated by hard earned wealth saintly person should depend on krishna if krishna is not supplying cloth all right find out some torn torn out cloth on the street and food go to the tree take some fruit and for water go to the river there is sufficient water and for shelter go to the cave so these are already arranged and above over and above do you think that the supreme lord does not take care of the person who has fully surrendered unto him then why you are going to flatter these rich class of men for your food throughout the history in india you will find many hundred thousands of these sadhus they do not go anywhere prabhupad had seen at alahabad kumbh mela they take bath in the ganges and sit down in their place chant hari krishna without caring where from the food will come they sit down and everything is coming and then astikyam astikyam means to have faith in the authority of vedic knowledge that is called astikyam according to our vedic principle one who has full faith in the vedic knowledge he is astik and who has no faith in the vedic knowledge he is nastik so be astik don't be nastik there is no useful purpose becoming an astik be astik and the essence of vedic knowledge is bhagavad gita because the supreme personality of god had is speaking personally take advantage of it apply it practically life and be happy not only in this life but the next life so these are the qualifications mm-hmm. apart from that there is another verse in shrimad bhagavatam a similar verse 7.11.21 shamo damas tapas shocham santosham shantir arjavam gnanam daya chutatmatvam satyam cha brahm lakshanam the symptoms of a brahman are control of mind control of senses austerity and penance 
cleanliness, satisfaction, forgiveness, simplicity, knowledge, mercy, truthfulness and complete surrender to the Supreme Personality of Godhead. And then there is another verse in Srimad Bhagavatam, 11.17.16, where Lord Krishna describes Varanashram. And that he says, Shamo Damas Tapah Shaucham Santosha Kshanti Rarjavam Mad Bhakti Shchadaya Satyam Brahma Prakrutaya Stvima Peacefulness, self-control, austerity, cleanliness, satisfaction, tolerance, simple straightforwardness, devotion to me, mercy and truthfulness are the natural qualities of the Brahmanas. The Brahmanas should be taught how to become truthful. First of all, a Brahman will never speak lie at any cost. It is stated that even if his enemy inquires something confidential from him, he will say, yes, this is my position, this is truthfulness. He will not even, I mean to say, goil against his enemy. He should be truthful. Even Kshatriyas, they are also truthful men. Truthfulness is so valuable. That makes one powerful Brahman, Satyam. A Brahman must be truthful. That is the first business of Brahman, truthful. He will speak truth even before an enemy. Nobody speaks truth before an enemy because he wants to hide something. But Brahmana's business is to become truthful even before an enemy. That is stated. There are many instances. Just like Satyakam Jabala. A boy, Satyakama, he went to Gautam Muni. Sir, I want to become your disciple. Oh, very good. Are you a Brahman or Brahman's son? Formerly, in Vedic ways, nobody could be accepted as a disciple unless he is born in high class family. Brahman, Kshatriya, Vaishya, especially Brahmans. So this question was asked. Which family you belong to? So he said, I do not know what is my classification. Now who is your father? That I do not know. Ask your mother. Then he went to his mother. Who is my father? My dear boy, I do not know. So actually his mother was a maid servant. So maid servants have so many men. And by whom she was pregnant, she cannot remember. She also told the truth. And this Satyakama, he also came to Gautam Muni and he said, Sir, my father, my mother also does not know who is my father. Oh, that's all right. You are a Brahman because you are truthful. You do not hide yourself that I am a prostitute son. You say, this is the position. I am plainly speaking that my mother does not know who is my father. I do not know. So because he was truthful, that is the symptom of a Brahman. He accepted, yes, I will accept you as my disciple. And also, a Brahman should be independent. He should live by his qualities. People will honor him. Chant Hare Krishna. That's all. If Krishna wants, he will give us food or we shall starve. Depend on Krishna. If he wants, he will give us food. If he wants, we shall starve. This is Brahman, practical. Shudra he has no power to live independently. That is Shudra. Just chant Hare Krishna and Krishna will supply everything. Be confident. This is Brahman. Don't depend on anyone else. If you contribute voluntarily, welcome. But we are not dependent on you. This is Brahmanical class of men. So independent. There must be Brahmanas who are independent. Chanakya Pandit, whose name is still, still celebrated. He was Prime Minister of Maharaj Chandragupta, but he was not accepting a single paisa as salary. Although he was the Prime Minister, Chanakya Pandit maintained his Brahman spirit. He did not accept any salary. If a Brahman accepts a salary, it is understood that he has become a dog. That is stated in Srimad Bhagavatam. He can advise, but he cannot accept employment. So Chanakya Pandit was living in a cottage but he was actually the Prime Minister. This Brahmanical culture and a Brahmanical brain is the standard of Vedic civilization. But a Brahmana will never accept anyone's service. No, it is stated that in the Shastras, that if there is bad time for a Brahman, he may accept the profession of a Kshatriya or even up to Vaishya, but never the profession of a Shudra, which is dog's business. These are the statements in the Shastras. Brahmana's business is six. Pathan, Pathan, Yajan, Yajan, Dana, Parigraha. A Brahman must be learned and he must make others learned. That I am learned man, I don't care others. No. 
ही मस्ट टीच अदर्स टू बिकम ब्राह्मण पठन पाठन यजन याजन ही मस्ट वर्शिप गॉड एंड ही मस्ट टीच अदर्स ऑल्सो हाउ टू वर्शिप गॉड यजन याजन दान परिग्रह ब्राह्मण बिजनेस इज नॉट टू डू एनी ट्रेड और प्रोफेशनल ही टेक्स चैरिटी परिग्रह बट दान देर फोर इन इंडिया इट इज सेट दैट इफ अ ब्राह्मण गेट्स वन लैक रुपीज स्टिल ही इज अ बेगर वाई बिकॉज ही डज नॉट कीप इट If he gets one lakh of rupees now, the next moment he will spend it for Krishna. Dana parigraha. So that was about Brahman. Mm hmm. And what is Kshatriya? Kshatriya's qualities? Yes. So just as Brahman means spiritual guidance, Kshatriya means material guidance. So these things are necessary. So Krishna tells the qualities of a Kshatriya. Shauryam tejo drdir dakshim yute chapya palayanam. दानम ईश्वर भावश्च छात्र कर्म स्वभावचम हिरोइजम पावर डिटर्मिनेशन रिसोर्सफुलनेस कॉरेज इन बैटल जनरोसिटी एंड लीडरशिप आर द नेचुरल क्वालिटीज ऑफ वर्क फॉर द क्षत्रियस सो हिरोइजम शौर्य तेजो युद्धे चाप्य पलायनम क्षत्रिय क्षत्रिय मस्ट बी वेरी हिरोइक ही विल नेवर गो अवे फ्रॉम फाइटिंग इफ अ क्षत्रिय इज चैलेंज आई वॉन्ट टू फाइट विथ यू Yes, come on. That is Kshatriya. Kshatriya must be very heroic. He will never go away from fighting. Heroism. That is just like Maharaj Parikshit. He was going on his tour and he saw one black man was trying to kill a cow. Immediately he took his sword. Who are you? You are trying to kill cow in my kingdom? This is called heroism. Now where is that hero? And they are becoming president. how he will command he is not a hero everyone has right to live why they are killing animals this is heroism as soon as he saw that a rascal is going to kill a cow why you are doing this immediately he took his sword heroism and then tejo they should be shauryam very powerful and very influential shaurya tejo and tejo ojas ojas means strength just like kshatriya Dear Tejo, a Kshatriya cannot tolerate that a man is being tortured before him. No, he will take immediately. Why, man? Even animal, even animal, just like again, Parshit Maharaj. He saw that one cow was being attempted to be killed. Immediately, he took his sword. And in the modern civilization, even in a city like New York, if a man is killed before one man, nobody will take care. Nobody will take care. Is it not? Let him be killed. i am going on my way so this is not civilization currently there are simply all shudras kalo shudra sambhava so you cannot be happy under the government of the shudras that is not possible must be tejo government must be very very powerful even say not more than 100 years ago the kashmir king was so powerful that there was no stealing in the state on the whole state there was no stealing there was no thief that is government in the at night i have to become concerned that thief may come a burglar may come so that is not government one should lie down very freely the government is there that is tejo kshatriya and then dhruti shaucham shauryam tejo dhruti he must be determined and the kshatriyas their determination is when they go to fight either to own victory or die not returning back sir no if a kshatriya is hurt on the back side he is degraded he must be hurt on the chest front side that is kshatriya that means he has fought nicely there is injury on the chest not on the back side back side injury means he was fleeing So Kshatriya's determination is either you own the battle or die in the battle. That will be explained. If you own the battle, then enjoy. You have got the kingdom. But if you die in the battle, you go to the heaven because you have fought for the right cause. You will go to the heaven. So killing, killing is very bad. But killing for the sake of right cause of fighting or killing and sacrifice, they are not sinful. and then daksham he must be very expert akshatriya 
he is expert in the military science how to kill so the killing art is there you cannot make it null and void by advocating non violence no that is required violence is also a part of the society and then yuddhe chapya palayanam a kshatriya is never afraid of fighting neither if somebody challenges i want to fight with you i want to fight with you the kshatriya will never deny if somebody comes forward to a kshatriya that i want to play chess or gamble they cannot deny so kshatriya because a kshatriya cannot refuse if any opposing party comes to a kshatriya that i want to fight with you a kshatriya cannot deny and that fighting would go on to the death till it is decided one must die not that the fighting is going on and the so called president is sitting in his parlor and smoking cigarette no yuddhe chapya palayanam oh everyone is fighting there i must go in the front he will fight otherwise how people will be encouraged the chief man is in the background and poor men they are fighting no yuddhe chapya palayanam that is kshatriya yuddhe chapya palayanam the kshatriya are so brave they don't go away from fighting field battlefield just like arjun was trying to become non violent immediately krishna chastised him kutastva kshma labidam vishamaye samupasthitam anarya jushtam akirtim karam now who is kshatriya a fourth class man he never seen battlefield and by what he becomes president and here kshatriya means yuddhe shapya palayanam if there is fight he must come forward first of all he is in his palace and he is engaging common men go and fight when there was battle of kurukshetra arjun and duryodhan they came first because the battle was decided as soon as the leader is dead no more fight so they used to come first this is kshatriya where is that kshatriya and they are becoming politicians simply by vote all third class fourth class men what he will do everyone is trying to keep his position by hook and crook how he will think of people how they will be happy he is thinking of his own happiness and these are politicians there is no kshatriya now in the battlefield the poor mercenaries they go to give their life whereas the janadipati the leader of the people they sit down very comfortably they do not go to the battlefield they simply give order in writing and the poor mercenaries paid soldiers they are paid for giving their life money is so sweet that one is prepared to give his life for money such men are sent to the war field and the janadipati they are after also money but they carefully avoid the battlefield minister of defense perhaps he has never seen a battlefield minister of defense formerly it was not like that when there was fight because they are kshatriya kshatriyas they will never go back from fighting yuddhe chapya palayanam that is the symptom of kshatriya when there is fight they will come forward shaurya tejo virya yuddhe chapya palayanam ishwara bhava cha danam cha kshatriyas means they are very powerful strong and when there is fight a kshatriya if he is challenged by somebody that i want to fight with you he cannot deny yes what kind of fight you want bows arrows or club or sword and that way they will fight and fight means until one is dead the fight will go on that is fight now where is that war these politicians will remain in their room safely they will not go to the war and why these people are voted for political post formerly the king would first of all stand to the other side also the king is there and this side also the fight is going on if the king is killed then the victory is there yuddhe chapya palayanam the formula is there so these class of men should be on the administration not anyone coward nonsense and by hook and crook they get some vote and take the political leader how will you find peace just like in your body you have got brain brain is required then hand whenever there is some attack consciously unconsciously i forward my hand so the division is already there if you come to attack me with a knife i don't push my head i push my hand so when there is attack the brahmanas are not expected to go forward the kshatriyas so this is the way and then danam generosity 
वन ऑफ द क्वालिफिकेशन ऑफ क्षत्रिया इज टू बी चैरिटेबल क्षत्रिया और रूलर लेवीज टैक्स अपॉन द सिटीजन नॉट फॉर इज पर्सनल सेंस गार्टिफिकेशन बट टू गिव चैरिटी इन सुटेबल केसेस दानम ईश्वर भाव On one hand, Kshatriya have the propensity to rule, but on the other, they are very liberal with charity. When Maharaj Yudhishthir gave charity, he engaged Karana to take charge of distributing it. Karana was very famous as Data Karana. The word Data refers to one who gives charity very liberally. The kings always kept a large quantity of food grains in stock, and whenever there was any scarcity of grains. they would distribute grains in charity a kshatriya's duty is to give charity and a brahmana's duty is to accept charity but not more than needed to maintain body and soul together therefore when the brahmanas were given so much land by lord ramachandra they returned it to him and were not greedy and the ishwara bhava ishwara bhavascha and the governing spirit ishwara bhavascha and ruling over others Kshatriya must have Ishwar bhav the ability to control others but he must use such power for protection not the exploitation of the citizens a kshatriya king is proud to give protection to the surrendered souls this attitude of a king is called ishwar bhav or factual power to give protection in a righteous cause in the bhagavad gita the lord instructs living being to surrender unto him and he promises all protection The Lord is all powerful and true to his word and therefore he never fails to give protection to his different devotees the king being the representative of the lord must possess this attitude of giving protection to surrendered souls at all risk although the general quality of the kshatriya is ishwar bhav the tendency to rule a kshatriya is not supposed to rule over a brahman you should note this i see yes a brahman is independent thus maharaj parikshit regretted that he had wanted to rule over the brahmans and had therefore been cursed he considered himself the lowest of the kshatriyas danam ishwar bhavascha kshatra karma swabhavacham there was no doubt that maharaj parikshit had the good qualities of a kshatriya but as a devotee he presented himself with submissiveness and humility as the lowest of the kshatriyas remembering his act of of wrapping a dead serpent around the neck of a brahman mhm interesting yes so these are the qualities described by krishna and then there are other qualities like akshatriya is one who saves the citizens from being injured that is kshatriya parajak bhayam if the government is unsteady and unregulated and there is danger of fear for the people so akshatriya is one who saves the citizens from being injured mm-hmm. yes and charity as i had told you the kshatriyas or the administrative class of men is especially advised to give charity and not to accept charity at any circumstances oh not to accept yes i'm repeating this because modern administrators raise subscriptions for some political function but never gives in charity to the citizens in any state function it is just the reverse of the instruction of the shastras prabhu ji the administrative class should learn scriptures so they can be teachers can they teach no the administrative class of men must be well versed in the shastras but must not take to the profession of teachers the energy shall be specially diverted for killing the thieves the decoits the black marketers and all such undesirable elements of the society also the administrator shall never pretend to become non violent and thereby go to hell mm-hmm. when arjun wanted to become a non violent coward in the battlefield of kurukshetra he was severely taken into task by lord krishna the lord degraded arjun at that time to the status of an uncivilized man for his avowed acceptance of the cult of non violence Mm-hmm. Yes. So these are the qualities, and then there are other verses from Shrimad Bhagavatam which I'll state. Like this is a verse from Shrimad Bhagavatam seven point eleven point twenty two. Shauryam viryam dhritis tejas tyagas chatma jayas chama brahmanyata prasadascha satyam chak chatra lakshanam 
to be influential in battle unconquerable patient challenging and charitable to control the bodily necessities to be forgiving to be attached to the brahmanical nature and to be always jolly and truthful these are the symptoms of the kshatriya and then there is another shloka in shrimad bhagavatam 11.17.17 tejo balam dhruti shauryam titikshau dharyam udyamah sthairyam brahmanyam aishwaryam shatra prakrutaya stvimah dynamic power bodily strength determination heroism tolerance generosity great endeavor steadiness devotion to the brahmanas and leadership are the natural qualities of the kshatriyas so that was kshatriya now the vaishyas mm. okay our first problem is because we have got this material body eating everyone must eat so krishna says in bhagavad gita annad bhavati bhutani if there is sufficient fruit grains then both man and animal they become happy therefore our first religion is to produce food grain sufficiently to feed everyone krishi goraksha vanijyam vaishya karma swabhavajam this matter has been entrusted to the vaishyas they should produce sufficient food and give protection to the cows for sufficient milk then the whole human society animal society will be happy but we are disobeying the orders or the rules given by god instead of producing food we are producing motor car we are disobeying the order of god therefore we are unhappy producing motor car is not vaishya qualities of vaishya is described by krishna krushi go raksha vanijya vaishya karma swabhavajam farming cow protection and business are the natural work for the vaishyas so krushi go raksha vanijya and if you belong to the merchant and community then you must do business and produce agricultural grains and distribute them that is your business in the bhagavad gita you will find that the merchantile class who are merchantile class kushi goraksha vanijyam vaishya karma swabhavajam vaishya means the merchantile community they are meant for giving protection to the animals and produce grain and distribute and make trade on them that's all because formerly there were no industry people generally depended on agricultural work therefore the merchantile community they used to produce food grains and distribute them and protection of cow was their duty as the king was interested to protect the life of the citizens similarly the vaishya class or the merchantile class they were interested to protect the life of cow why particularly cow was protected because milk is very essential food for the human society therefore cow protection is the duty of uh, the human society that is the conception of vedic literature the shastra especially recommends krushi go raksha the vaishya section of humanity should arrange for the food of the entire society through agricultural activities and should give protection to the cows which are the most useful animal because they supply milk to human society so prabhu ji all the factory owners and business class of men uh, today they belong to the merchantile class right generally we understand vaishyas means the merchantile class of men no at the present moment the so called vaishyas are shudras less than shudras why now the vaishyas business is krushi goraksha vanijyam vaishya karma swabhavajam the vaishyas must be engaged in producing food grains but they are not interested they are interested in opening factories for bolts and nuts and tires goodwill tires good year tires now you eat tire and bolt nut no you cannot eat you have to eat rice and rice is 10 rupees per kilo now this is proper times 10 rupees per kilo that's all because no vaishyas is producing food grains this is the defect they don't see the defect they are simply howling bowling oh it has increased price why not increase price there are so millions of people in bombay city who is producing food grains but they are known as vaishyas what kind of vaishya that you must produce enough food grains by agriculture and give production to the cows that means if you have got enough food grains to eat and if you have got enough milk to get fatty substance then your whole economic question is solved annad bhavanti bhutani all living bodies subsist on food grains which are produced from grains rains are produced by performance of yajna 
sacrifice and yajna is born of prescribed duties if you get sufficient food there is no question of agitation everyone is satisfied animal and man so you must produce that is the recommendation in the bhagavad gita you will be satisfied that's all not only that by god's arrangement there are so much land on this planet that you can produce 10 times food stuffs of the whole population but they are not doing that right and then go raksha production of cows the surbi cow is described as havirdhani the source of butter butter when clarified by melting produces ghee or clarified butter which is inevitably necessary for performing great ritualistic sacrifices as stated in bhagavad gita 18.5 yajna dana karmana tyajyam karyam evata sacrifice charity and austerity are essential to keep human society perfect in peace and prosperity yajna the performance of sacrifice is essential to perform yajna clarified butter is absolutely necessary and to get clarified butter milk is necessary milk is produced when there are sufficient cows therefore bhagavad gita 18.44 cow production is recommended krushi go raksha vanijyam vaishya garma swabhavajam in fact nanda maharaj's family is uh, celebrated as a vaishya family and krishna identifying himself as their son took charge of vaishya activities krushi go raksha vanijyam balaram represents plowing the land for agriculture and therefore always carries in his hand a plow whereas krishna tends cows and therefore carries a flute in his hand thus the two brothers represent krushi raksha and go raksha for human happiness one must care for the animals especially the cows vasudev therefore inquired whether there was good arrangement for animals where nanda maharaj lived for the proper pursuit of human happiness there must be arrangement for the protection of cows this means that there must be forest and adequate pasturing grounds full of grass and water if the animals are happy there will be ample supply of milk from which human beings will benefit by deriving many milk products with which to live happily as enjoined in bhagavad gita 18.44 krushi go raksha vanijyam vaishya garam swabhavajam without giving proper facilities to the animals how can human society be happy why go raksha why not other animals raksha krishna has not said animal raksha or janavara raksha go raksha the cow is very very important animal if you want to advance your spiritual consciousness then you must have sufficient milk and sufficient grains that is civilization cow production is very very essential in human society because it gives the milk the miracle food you can prepare hundreds and thousands of preparations all not only delicious but brain maintaining you can get good brain therefore go raksha cow production is especially recommended not that animal protection if you want to eat meat you can eat many other animals there are but don't eat the cows this is vedic civilization even now in the indian villages surrounding vrindavan the villagers live happily simply by giving protection to the cows they keep cow dung very carefully and dry it to use as fuel they keep a sufficient stock of grains and because of giving protection to the cows they have sufficient milk and milk products to solve all economic problems simply by giving protection to the cows the villagers live so peacefully even the urine and stool of cows have medicinal value so that is cow production and vanijyam vanijyam means trade if there is excess milk if there is excess grain product then you can sell to others that means the third class man they would give production to the cows produce enough food grains and if there is excess then it can be traded so this is the business of the third class man and these persons they let them produce enough food grains and where there is no there is scarcity of food grains let them supply there that is called trade vanijyam vanijyam but at the present moment there are so many countries they can produce profuse quantities of food grains sometimes they do it and throw it in the ocean for what is called economic balance that is not good everyone should produce enough quantity of food grains and if there is shortage they should send there in this way the whole world should cooperate 
there is united nations but what they are doing let them study bhagavad gita how to make united nations that will be perfect not these short sighted men with politics and diplomacy in heart they can bring all nations united that is not possible let them discuss bhagavad gita let them discuss how perfect society can be established then there will be peace and vaishya karma swabhavajam so these are the qualities that krishna describes in bhagavad gita and then there are other verses from shrim bhagavatam regarding this like shrimad bhagavatam 7.11.23 deva guru vachute bhaktir stri varga pariposhanam astikyam uddamo nityam naipunyam vaishya lakshanam being always devoted to the demigods the spiritual master and the supreme lord vishnu endeavoring for advancement in religious principles economic development and sense gratification dharma arth and kama believing in the words of the spiritual master and scripture and always endeavoring with expertise in earning money these are the symptoms of the vaishya likewise there is another shloka in shrimad bhagavatam 11.17.18 astikyam dana nishtha cha adambho brahm sevanam atushthir artho pachaira vaishya prakrutaya stvima faith in the vedic civilization dedication to charity freedom from hypocrisy service to the brahmanas and perpetually desiring to accumulate more money are the natural qualities of the vaishyas so this was vaishyas now the shudras so krishna says in bhagavad gita 18.44 paricharyayatmaka karma shudrasyaapi swabhavajam and for the shudras there is labor and service to others shudra has one qualification what is that परिचर्यायात्मका शूद्र कर्म स्वभावजम अशूद्रा मीन्स ही विल बी सैटिस्फाइड इफ ही गेट्स वन गुड मास्टर दैट्स ऑल नो अदर क्वालिफिकेशन सो एट द प्रेजेंट मोमेंट अ पर्सन मे बी अ ग्रेट टेक्नोलॉजिस्ट हाई एजुकेटेड बट ही डज नॉट गेट इफ ही डज नॉट गेट अ गुड मास्टर गुड एम्प्लॉयर ही इज नथिंग ही हैज नो वैल्यू ही हैज नो इंडिपेंडेंस ही हैज टू एक्सेप्ट सम सर्विस एंड paricharyatmaka karma shudrasyaapi swabhavajam and those who are not intelligent to be trained up as a brahman or a kshatriya or a vaishya the fourth class men let them work these three other classes let them work paricharyatmaka karma shudrasyaapi swabhavajam in this regard there are other verses from shrimad bhagavatam like 7.11.24 shudrasya sannati shaucham सेवा स्वामीन्य मायया अमंत्रयज्ञो यस्तेयम सत्यम गो विप्र रक्षणम ऑफरिंग ओबेसेंसेस टू द हायर सेक्शन ऑफ द सोसाइटी द ब्राह्मणस क्षत्रियस एंड वैश्यस बीइंग ऑलवेज वेरी क्लीन बीइंग फ्री फ्रॉम ड्युप्लिसिटी सर्विंग वंस मास्टर परफॉर्मिंग सैक्रिफाइसेस विदाउट अटरिंग मंत्रस नॉट स्टीलिंग ऑलवेज स्पीकिंग द ट्रुथ एंड गिविंग ऑल प्रोटेक्शन टू द काउस एंड ब्राह्मणस दीस आर द सिम्टम्स ऑफ द शूद्र and then there is another verse in shrimad bhagavatam 11.17.19 shushrushanam dujagavam devanam chapya mayaya tatra labdhena santosha shudra prakrutaya stvimah service without duplicity to brahmanas cows demigods and other worshipable personalities and complete satisfaction with whatever income is obtained in such service are the natural qualities of the shudras So these are the qualities of the four varnas described by Krishna and in Shrimad Bhagavatam. So now, before we move ahead to the ashramas, do we have any questions? Uh, yes, Prabhu Ji, what is a Dvija, Vipra, a Brahman, and a Vaishnav in the context of Kali Yuga? Only the Brahman, Kshatriya, they are taken as high elevated. But nowadays, Kalushudra Sambhava. In this age, you cannot distinguish who is Brahman, who is Kshatriya, who is a Vaishya. who is a shudra it is accepted that everyone is shudra because there is no reformation so according to pancharatri kividi everyone should be given a chance to of becoming a vaishnav a dvija and that is recommendation in the hari bhakti vilas that by the proper initiation process everyone can be brought into the platform of dvija twice born and then he becomes after initiation his second birth is there samskara bhavet dvija then he is allowed to read the scriptures veda patha bhavet vipra he becomes vipra then when he really comes to the knowledge of brahman 
his relationship with brahman and acts accordingly then he is a brahmana and when he is perfectly situated in the eternal relationship with god vishnu then he becomes a vaishnav that is perfection of life uh, is it uh, practical in the present context is this practical in the present context yes we are doing it see if anyone has eyes to see they can see how we are accepting the papayoni so called papayoni to become the topmost vaishnav that is possible unless it is possible how it is being done all over the world there is no consideration the process is so effective that it is being done prabhu ji you talked about um, uh, violence but uh, isn't non violence better than fighting doesn't bhagavad gita teach non violence they have spoiled the whole situation by mal interpreting and by bringing some rascal and pose as leader the whole world is spoiled if you want to preach some rascal philosophy you do why you take bhagavad gita that is cheating i preach something nonsense and i take bhagavad gita why why you take bhagavad gita you there are so many rascal philosophers you also preach your own philosophy why do you take bhagavad gita and where is non violence in bhagavad gita yes where is non violence in bhagavad gita in politics the duryodhan said you have come to for kingdom yes you can take so he said no 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 that we shall decide in the battlefield this is kshatriya oh duryodhan you are so gentleman let us settle up no 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 that will be settled in the battlefield this is bhagavad gita no we have come to the battlefield we must decide by fighting this is kshatriya chaturvarnamaya sushtam guna karma vibhagasha yuddhe chapya palayanam this is the teaching of bhagavad gita yuddhe chapya palayanam then where is this non violence coming in bhagavad gita apalayanam come on fight you have no weapon take from me this is kshatriya the kshatriya are so brave they don't go away from fighting field battlefield just like arjuna was trying to become non violent immediately krishna chastised him kutastva kashma devadam vishame samupasthidam anahare dushtam swargyam kirtim karam arjuna madhya arjun how have these impurities come upon you they are not at all befitting a man who knows the value of life they lead not to her planets but to infamy so everything is required the administrator should never pretend to be non violent and thereby go to hell when arjuna wanted to become non violent coward on the battlefield of kurukshetra he was severely chastised by lord krishna the lord degraded arjun at that time to the status of an uncivilized man for his avowed acceptance of the cult of non violence as supreme teacher of the world lord krishna condemns the attitude of arjun who said i do not find any good in this fighting it will cause perpetual habitation in hell such statements by arjun were due to ignorance only he wanted to become non violent in the discharge of his specific duty for kshatriya to be on the battlefield and to become non violent is the philosophy of fools in the parashar smriti or religious codes made by parashar the great sage and father of vyasadeva it is stated kshatriyo hi praja rakshan shastra pani pradandayan nirchitya parasainyadi kshitim dharmena palayat the kshatriya's duty is to protect the citizens from all kinds of difficulties and for that reason he has to apply violence in suitable cases of law and order therefore he has to conquer the soldiers of inimical kings and thus with religious principles he should rule over the world so shastra vidim is required so here is one shastra vidim from parashara smruti parashara was father of vyasadeva he has got his regulative principles they are also realized souls on vedic principles they wrote so many books in this parashara smruti it is said kshatriyo hi praja rakshan shastra pani pradandayan shastra shastra pani pradandayan shastra pani means always with sword in the hand for the benefit of the praja he should be so strong oh you are a thief you have stolen immediately cut his hand bas this one example will stop millions of thieves not to commit stealing simply by cutting even a hundred years ago this system was prevalent in, in kashmir if a thief is arrested and if he is proved that he has stolen 
Immediately, king will cut off his two hands. Bas finished. This is government. Therefore, the injunction is Chhatriya hi prajarakshan shastrapani pradandayam. Always must be very strict. Nirjitya prajasanyadi chitim dharmena padayat. This is dharma. So, in the Manusmriti, as I am quoting from Parashar Smriti, there are Smriti Shastras. The Manusmriti, it is said that if a man commits murder, then he should be killed. Otherwise, he will suffer in the next life. So many sufferings. So, the king's order to condemn a murderer to death is a mercy. Is a mercy for him because he saved from future so many troubles. So, the king should be so strict. Not that by compassion. No. He is murderer. That's all right. He has killed one man. Why he should be killed? No. He must be killed. That is the law. Here it is also Parashara Smruti. It is said that Kshatriya should be always Shastrapani and must strictly as soon as there is any disciplinary he must take. Kshatriyas are also allowed for being trained how to kill. Kshatriyas means Kshar. Kshar means injury. And Tra means Trayate, saves. A Kshatriya has to save the citizens from being injured by others. He is called Kshatriya. So Arjun was a Kshatriya, trained by Dronacharya how to kill. This is the non-violence is not the business of the Kshatriyas. That is cowardice. They are taught how to become violent. Otherwise, they cannot rule over. Formerly, the judgment was given by the king immediately finished. Not go to the court and wait for judgment for 10 years. In the meantime, everything is finished. Not like that. Anything. There was regularly the king used to sit in his assembly and all the criminals, culprits, they were judged by the king himself. Sometimes the kill had to kill personally with the sword. Even in the European countries, the royal orders were trained up. Kshatriya, he is expert in the military science, how to kill. So the killing art is there. You cannot make it null and void by advocating non-violence. No, that is required. Violence is also a part of the society. As I told, just like, just like here is some itching sensation. That is violence. That is required for comfort. So similarly, Arjun was Kshatriya. He knew the art of killing and still Krishna is Krishna also. He apparently has a Kshatriya in, his, in the dynasty of Kshatriyas. Vasudev. Son of Vasudev, he also knew the art of killing. That is also one of the part of his business. Yada yada hi dharmasya jnani bhavati bharata paritranaya sadhunam vinashaya chadushkrutam So vinasha requires violence. So we cannot decry violence. That is also required. Krishna was speaking Bhagavad Gita, the science of God in the battlefield of Kurukshetra. We cannot condemn violence. That is not possible. Yes, yes, Prabhuji, what you say is, I accept what you say is, right. Uh, Prabhuji, is there violence even in the spiritual world? There is no violence in the spiritual world. That is a fact. Violence is only in the material world. Aha. Uh -huh. I used to think that violence is never to be used, but now it is getting clearer. Even in the modern day, we use violence and that is true, yes, Prabhuji. Like the army people, yes, but Prabhuji, is it not uh, sinful to kill is it not sinful to kill somebody like... You see, after the Mahabharata war, Krishna wanted these Pandavas should go to Bhishma and hear his instruction. Therefore, despite his advice to Maharaj Yudhishthir that there was no wrong in your part, you are thinking you have killed or for your sake so many men have been killed, that is not... You are not responsible for that. You are not sinful. For a Kshatriya, killing is not sinful. For Brahman sacrificing an animal in the arena, that is not sinful. So it is all explained in the Bhagavad Gita. Sadosham api not that jet. Killing is bad, but a Kshatriya's business is to kill. Without killing, one cannot become perfect Kshatriya. Because he has to give protection. And there are so many demons, rascals. So if the king becomes non-violent, how other citizens will be given protection? No. So, king's business is as soon as he sees one undesirable element, immediately he would kill him. That is real protection. Just like when Parikshit Maharaj was going on tour, he saw one black man was trying to kill a cow. Immediately he saw. 
Who are you? You are trying to kill cow in my kingdom? I shall kill you. He immediately took out his sword. This is king. Similarly, for punishment, himsa is used. Just like Manu Samhita. It is said that the murderer should be hanged. So this is also himsa. To get him, a man hanged. But Manu Samhita says that this kind of himsa is necessary. Because the man who has committed murder, if he is hanged, then this life, all his sinful activity is finished. Otherwise, in his next life, he has to suffer so many things. So it is the duty of the king to take his life, so that he may be relieved from other sinful reaction. So according to Shastra, Himsa, a Himsa is good, but when there is necessity, Himsa is also good. Yes, when there is uh, right Himsa, then it becomes right action. Yes. And actually it is not Himsa. Actually it is not Himsa. Exactly. Yeah, actually it is not Himsa. Exactly. Right. Exactly. But... Just like father gives a slap. Yeah, it is not Himsa. It is not Himsa. Yeah. Similarly, the Himsa, so called Himsa, when it is directed by Krishna, that is not Himsa. That is love. Yeah, yeah. But when it is not directed by Krishna? Then it is Himsa. That so called Himsa, when it is directed by Krishna, is not Himsa. Yeah, exactly, I agree. The same example as I gave you, that when the king condemns a murderer to death, it is not Himsa. It is doing good to him. King means Krishna's representative, Naradevata. The king is supposed to act on behalf of Krishna, just like Krishna's business is Paritranaya Sadhunam Vinashaya Chadushkrutam. Yes, yes. Similarly, king's business is to give protection to the faithful and punish the unfaithful. Right. Right. I get this point very clearly, Prabhuji. Nice. Next. So, Prabhuji, you said that uh, the Kshatriyas must take uh, tax. What should be the tax system? Hmm. As for land ownership, in the Vedic civilization, the land was given to the people for cultivation, not for ownership. And the tax was collected which was 25% of person's income. The land belonged to the state and the man would cultivate it and pay 25% to the state. What if the farmer uh, did not get any output even after um, farming? Maybe owing to floods or drought something, he did not produce anything then? If he has no income, then he doesn't have to pay any income tax. Uh Uh-huh. What if someone uh, does not pay any tax at all? If he doesn't pay tax, he may be disowned of the land. One cannot get land from the government unless he agrees to produce something. And if everyone produces food, then there is no scarcity. At least he has his own food produced by himself. The farmers uh, does not own the land, you mean? No. That was perfect in Vedic system. That you, the land is supposed to belong to the government or the king. The king gives you the land that you make production and give me tax. One fourth. That's all. So there is no question of profit. If you have produced one kilo, give one fourth kilo to the king as tax. That is a real social system. So the Kshatriyas own the land? You mean? No. Actually, according to our Vedic system, everything belongs to God. And the king is supposed to be the representative of God to manage things. Aha. Yes. So, for his managerial work, he requires some money. Therefore, say, I am a Vaishya and I have taken some land for my livelihood. So, whatever production is there, I pay one for to the king for management. This is nice system. As soon as the tax is realized in terms of pound, shilling, pence, whole difficulty arises. I have produced 10 pounds of rice and out of that one fourth I give to the government or to the king. So I have no anxiety. I produce 20 pounds, I give one fourth. I produce 10 pounds, I give one fourth. If I don't produce, I don't give. This is perfect system. You accept this ideal. So there is no anxiety. If I produce, I pay. If I don't produce, I don't pay. Is it not better? Yes. Make this simple method that whatever you produce, you give me one fourth. That's all. Right. 
प्रभु जी और व्हाट इफ समवन डज नॉट वांट टू फॉलो द वर्णाश्रम व्हाट अबाउट हिम वन हु डज नॉट फॉलो द स्टैंडर्ड सिस्टम ऑफ सोसाइटी शुड बी कंसीडर्ड अ फिफ्थ क्लास मैन अ सोसाइटी विदाउट वैदिक लॉज एंड रेगुलेशंस विल नॉट बी वेरी हेल्पफुल टू ह्यूमैनिटी एज स्टेटेड इन द वर्स धर्मां तेन परम विदु such a society does not know the aim of life and highest principle of religion one who does not follow the standard system of society should be considered a fifth class man in shrimad bhagavatam 11.17.20 this said ashocham anrutam steyam nastikyam shushka vigraha kama krodhascha tarshascha sabhavon tyavasayinam dirtiness dishonesty thievery faithlessness useless quarrel lust anger and hankering constitute the nature of those in the lowest position outside the varanashram system mhm yes prabhu ji why are we the iskon society krishna consciousness movement we are establishing so many farms why are we establishing farms vedic culture or brahmanical culture teaches one possessing the minimum necessities of life to teach this highest culture Varanashram Dharma is recommended. The aim of Varanashram divisions, Brahman, Kshatriya, Vaishya, Shudra, Brahmacharya, Grahastha, Vanaprastha and Sanyas is to train one to control the senses and be content with the bare necessities. In human society, therefore, the Brahmanical culture, Kshatriya culture and Vaishya culture must be maintained and people must be taught how to be satisfied with only what they need. In modern civilization, there is no such education. everyone tries to possess more and more and everyone is dissatisfied and unhappy the krishna consciousness movement is therefore establishing various farms especially in america to show how to be happy and content with minimum necessities of life and to save time for self realization which one can very easily achieve by chanting the maha mantra hare krishna hare krishna 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 hare 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 ram hare ram 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 hare hare Uh, Ramji, what about the restaurants like the Govindas restaurant in Iskon temples? What are they for? Nice. The farming and opening the restaurant are correlative. Correlative. Yes. In farming, you produce enough milk and milk products, at least ghee, and the ghee is dispatched to the restaurant in the city. And with that, you prepare first-class samosas, kachoris, vegetables, halwa. so many things people will like very much the principle is that not a drop of milk should be misused interesting i never knew that yes they are correlated aha uh-huh. proje how is uh, how is it that the milk is not misused by that hmm so the system is they have got a big pan and whatever milk is collected put into that pan it is being warmed so they drink the whole family members they drink milk whenever they like so whenever the milk remains at night they have to convert it into yogurt the next day they use milk and yogurt also as he likes then after converting the milk into yogurt still it remains it is stopped so when there is sufficient old yogurt they churn it and then butter comes out so they take the butter and the water separated from the butter that is called whey whey yes so they instead of dal they use this whey for chapati it will be very healthy and tasty and then the butter they turn into ghee so where is the loss and because ultimately it is going to be ghee so if you start in the city is nice restaurant so ghee can be sold there they'll pay for that and they can prepare nice preparations kachori samosa sweet balls or milk if you don't convert into yogurt then naturally it will become uh, what is called curd curd so you can send to the city they will convert into sandesh rasgulla other preparations and ghee convert them into curd or ghee and ghee and curd sent to the city they have got regular price for that there is no question of waste of milk at any stage one must know how to do it so you can keep as many cows as possible and collect as much milk from them you can utilize if some of the villagers trained up they can open nice restaurant in the city 
Utilize the key curd for making nice confectionery. People will purchase like anything. Just like in our Rathatra festival, whenever sweets they prepare are sold at good profit. Some countrymen, they do not see such nice things. And when they taste it, very nice. You see? Yes, right. Prabhuji, how is uh, cow protection related to the perfection of life? Hmm. Milking the cow means drawing the principles of religion in a liquid form. Mm-hmm. Yes, the great Rishis and Munis would live only by milk. Srila Shukadeva Goswami would go to a householder while he was milking a cow and he would simply take a little quantity of it for subsistence. Even 50 years ago, no one would deprive a sadhu of a quarter or two of milk. And every householder would give milk like water. For a sanatanist, a follower of Vedic principles, it is the duty of every householder to have cows and bulls as household paraphernalia, not only for drinking milk, but also for deriving religious principles. The sanatanists worships cow on religious principles and respects brahmanas. So production of cows means feeding the brahmanical culture, which leads towards God consciousness and thus perfection of human civilization is achieved. Without protection of cows, brahmanical culture cannot be maintained and without brahmanical culture, the aim of life cannot be fulfilled. The Lord, therefore, is described as Go Brahmanya Hitaicha because His incarnation is only for the protection of cows and brahmanas. If human society wants to be exalted, the leaders of the society must follow the instruction of Bhagavad Gita and give protection to the cows, the brahmanas and brahmanical culture. Pruja, how do we protect the cows? I mean, what does cow protection mean? Hmm. Cow protection means just like Bhagavan, the Supreme Personality of Godhead, he is tending the cows. He is going, taking the cows personally from his royal palace, going to the forest whole day, working there. Is it not coward boys? And taking some little fruit, mother, whatever mother has given, they are playing that. So this is cow protection. Not that somebody will give money and we shall keep some third class cows and feed there and become cow protectors. We must tend the cows very nicely so that they give us sufficient milk and with that milk we shall live. No, because we are giving protection to cow, you send money for the cows and the cow protectors and earn money there and give us money. We shall eat nicely and sleep. As soon as this practice is going on, then next will be give me some LSD, give me something else. This will go on. We don't want that. Cow protection means increasing the milk productions, namely curd and butter. Cow production means you get the milk, sufficient quantity, and from milk, you get so many nutritions full of vitamin food. In the Indian villages, like in Vrindavan, they get enough ghee for their personal use and sufficient excess to be sold to merchants who then also get some money. So, cow production means good food and good trade. I see. Yes. How does the cows give more milk, Prabhuji? Keeping cows happy. Mm -hmm. Yes. During Maharaj Yudhishthir's time, pasturing ground, they become muddy with milk. Mm -hmm. Yes. Just imagine how much milk was and how is it possible? Sishishchu varjana. The milk bag was so fatty and full with milk. Why? Muda. They were so happy. They were so happy. So if you keep the cows happy, the cow will supply a large quantity of milk. If the cow knows that you are going to kill it, she is always afraid, always fearful. Oh, this man will kill. They can understand. Prabhupada had seen in New Vrindavan. One cow, she was crying. Because her calf was taken away. So she was feeling so sorry. Now in our new Vrindavan, we see her, the cows are very happy. How they are dealing? They are not afraid. This is our duty to keep the cows happy. 
just like i want my wife and children happy similarly it is the duty of the human society to see that the cows feeling very happy this is human civilization right prabhuji um in varnashram are the majority of citizens shudras in a varnashram society yes the number of shudras are always bigger just like in the university education the the number of graduates and post graduates they are less others are big number bigger hmm right prabhu ji uh, but if the society is uh, divided into different groups won't there be envy like shudras and brahmanas i told you earlier no no just as in my body there are different parts that work together so society can have different parts working for the same goal my hand is different from my leg but when i turn my hand bring a glass of water the leg will help the leg is required and the hand is required but we see the class keep fighting like capitalist and communist they are fighting because they are not trained up they have no common cause the hand and the leg work differently but the common cause is to maintain the body right the common cause yes and no one was condemned even the shudras they are not condemned right the vedic system does not condemn anyone you are a potter oh you are lower no you are as good as a priest because you are doing your duty that's all right never condemns so they have got respectable terms just like a brahman is addressed as pandit maharaj a kshatriya is addressed as thakur sahib thakur and a merchant is addressed sheth ji and the laborer class addressed as choudhary means leader i see in this way everyone has got respectable position i see yes and satisfying vishnu is the common cause and why are all respectable because that test of their success was one vishnu right success sarva karmanatam abhyarcha siddhim labhate param whatever your occupation may be that doesn't matter but if you worship the supreme lord by your occupation then you are successful right so bhagavat says that you may be situated in any section it doesn't matter either you be a kshatriya or a brahman or a potter or a washerman or whatever you may be it doesn't matter everyone should be satisfied by his occupation in the spiritual world you haven't got to change your position and still you get success spiritual life that is the beauty you haven't got to change if somebody says that sir i am a potter how can i be krishna conscious it requires that one should be brahman one should uh, be very learned man vedanta philosophy and one must have the sacred thread this and that so i am a potter i am a cobbler i am a washerman no krishna says no you do not require to change chaitanya mahaprabhu also says you do not require to change krishna says that swakarmanatam abhyarcham you just try to worship the supreme lord by the result of your occupation because krishna requires everything so if you are a potter you supply pots if you are a florist you supply flowers if you are a carpenter you work for the temple if you are a washerman then wash clothes of the temple temple is the center krishna and everyone gets chance to offer his service you give your service that's all you be engaged in your service don't change your service but you try to serve the temple means the supreme lord by your occupational duty right i understand yes the point is that in any society there must be a leader there must be dictator and there must be workers but everyone should be so satisfied that they forget the difference right so all of them they are required but if they cooperate for the krishna consciousness so there is no strife between the higher and lower classes we find in the present social i mean to say status of life we are actually existing in four divisions but there is no cooperation practically everyone is dissatisfied take for example the strife between the capitalist and the laborer class so there is always strike why this is due to lack of krishna consciousness this is due to lack of krishna consciousness there cannot be any cooperation unless there is krishna consciousness 
So Krishna consciousness is an essential fact for harmonizing even the present material society. That is required. Krishna consciousness is so important thing that cooperation. The same example can be said here also. The leg. That the leg, the hands and the belly and the mouth. What they are? They are cooperating. Cooperating for what? Cooperating for maintaining this body. This is the common interest. And how is it cooperated? To supply everything to the stomach. The brain is working. Earning some money. The hand is fetching something and cooking. And the mouth is chewing and the leg is going. But the whole function is targeted to fulfilling the demands of the stomach. If these parts of the body non-cooperate with the stomach, they will become feeble and weak and there will be no capacity to work. Right. And in executing the prescribed duties of life, there is no one higher or lower. There are such divisions as higher and lower, but since there is actually a common interest that is to satisfy the Supreme Personality of Godhead, there are no distinctions between them. I see. Yes. Then the most important thing is to find the common cause that people can unite on. Yes. Just like in our Krishna Consciousness Society, you come to consult to Prabhupada about everything because Prabhupada can give you the common cause. Otherwise, they will be fighting. The government should be very expert to know the aim of life, the common cause. And they should train the people to work for the common cause. Then they will be happy and peaceful. But people simply let rascals, but they will never find a common cause. That is the problem. Right. Now, Prabhuji, who decides the varna of a person and how? Yes, that is by the tendency. As I told you, guna karami bhagasha, by the tendency. Therefore, one has to approach the spiritual master. He will give direction. This boy is meant for becoming Brahman. Everyone has got some tendency. From the tendency it should be designated or by work. Karma, vikarma, karma. Karma means what is prescribed. Guna karma. Guna karma vibhagasha. Karma means as it is in the Shastra. You have been developed a certain type of mode of nature. Your karma is according to that. Brahma karma, Kshatriya karma, Vaishya karma. So if you follow, that is the duty of the spiritual master and Shastra to designate whether he is Brahmachari that you work like this. You work like a Brahmana, you work like a Kshatriya, you work like a Vaishya and others, Shudra. So this division is made by the spiritual master. How? Yasya ya lakshanam proktam pumso varna bivanjakam. The spiritual master will say that you work like this. So that should be determined. That is karma, guna karma. Spiritual master sees that he has these qualities. That is natural. Just like in the school, college, somebody is being trained up as scientist, somebody is trained up as an engineer, as a medical man, as a lawyer. According to the tendency, practical philosophy of the student, he is advised that you take this line. Similarly, these four divisions of a society, it is very scientific. Oh, Prabhuji, when does this happen? So by the instruction of the Guru, when he is in the Gurukul, he will be specified a particular type of duty. And if he does it faithfully, Swakarmanatam Abhyarcha, the real purpose is Krishna consciousness. And according to his guna and karma, he is engaged in a particular occupational duty. Mm -hmm. Although by nature we should not enforce something, we should see for which work he is suitable. Right. Yes, whichever suitable, that one must be suitable for any of these. It is the guide's intelligence. For which purpose is suitable engagement, like that. Right. Uh, Prabhuji, what about woman training? Hmm. These are very important things. That soft-hearted woman, Vama Sudhava, they should be given protection. They should be trained up how to become faithful wife, affectionate mother. Then the home will be very happy. And without happiness, we cannot make any spiritual progress. We must be peaceful. This is the preliminary condition. Right. Prabhuji, uh, about the justice system, uh, how does that go? Like, uh, there are so many members that sometimes uh, someone may commit some offense or something. They have a judicial type of system where he comes before a board of members, older members like... Yes, all fights should be decided by the board. That's nice. 
and it will be accepted by the court. Here in India, there is such system. A board of five, ten men in the village. If there is some fight between two parties, whatever the board will decide, that will be accepted in the court. Panchayat. It is called panchayat system. Uh huh. Right. Yes. Um, that is it, Prabhuji. We can move ahead to the ashramas. Nice.